got two good start this time. Oh, okay. It says mic on. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us acknowledge our sin and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, bless Mary ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O oh God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whom, taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call our Father, Bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
A reading from the first book of Kings. Elijah went a day's journey into the desert until he came to a broom tree and sat beneath it. He prayed for death, saying, This is enough, O Lord. Take my life, for I am no better than my father's. He lay down and fell asleep under the broom tree. But then an angel touched him and ordered him to get up and eat. Elijah looked, and there at his head was a hearth cake and a jug of water. After he ate and drank, he lay down again. But the angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and ordered, Get up and eat, else the journey will be too long for you. He got up, ate, and drank. Then, strengthened by that food, he walked 40 days and 40 nights to the mountain of God, Horeb. The word of the Lord. Thanks. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with which, you, with which you were sealed for the day of redemption. All bitterness, fury, anger, shouting, and reviling must be removed from you along with all malice. And be kind to one another, compassionate, forgiving one another, as God has forgiven you in Christ. So be imitators of God 
as beloved children and live in love. As Christ loved us and handed himself over for us as a sacrificial offering to God for a fragrant aroma. The word of the Lord. a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The Jews murmured about Jesus because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. And they said, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph? Do we not know his father and mother? Then how can he say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered and said to them, stop murmuring among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws him and I will raise him up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to my father and learns from him comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the father, except the one who is from God. He has seen the father. Amen. Amen, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the desert, but they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. I have to see if I can do this. I've been out of practice now for several weeks. Uh, Deacon Augustine is attending a wedding of a friend someplace in the Midwest. So uh, that's why he's not here for this Sunday. And he leaves the parish on uh, Tuesday, early Tuesday morning. So keep him in prayer. The scriptures today, talking a lot about bread, always makes me think of my grandma and how when she made bread you know when you're a five-year-old kid 
it just seems like she had sacks and sacks of flour. I mean, it, it was a big bowl that she had, and she kept pouring flour in it and, and punching it and or kneading it and et cetera. And finally, when I'd raise it, punch it. So she put her whole self into this bread making process. This was not with <laughs> uh, those machines now that you you just put everything in the machine and press the button and and the blades go like this and and so oh oh I I worked all day I was making bread. <laughs> I mean the the. I'm not sure that blood went in, but I'm sure there's some drops of sweat that went into, into this bread making with my grandma. Because not only that, it was chopping the wood and making the kindling, the palitos. That was my job. I'd get the kindling, etc. So once the dough was ready, then she'd make the bolillos, the, the rolls, and put them in the oven. And, and that second reading today, Sacrificial offering to God for a fragrant aroma. Have you smelt homemade bread being in a, coming in the oven? I mean, the aroma just fills the whole house, and sometimes it spills out of the house as well, so that you're outside, the, mm, the bread's ready. <laughs> you want to go in and, Grandma, can I have one of the bolillos? No, it's too hot. You're going to get, you're going to get a, a, a tummy ache by eating the hot bread. Uh, this aspect of bread making that Jesus talking, I'm the bread of life, and I've come down from heaven, I'm the living bread, it just makes me think of what it takes to make bread. And my grandma, it took a lot of work, and she put her whole self into that. And it reminds me also of another lady, a friend of mine, who, when she makes brownies, she said, ooh, they taste so good because I made them with a lot of love. She put a lot of love in them, and, and they were good, even when they were burnt. <laughs> Even when they were burnt, they tasted good because she had made them with a lot of love. How different when somebody cooks or bakes and doesn't put love in. You know how we say when the chili is really hot? Híjole, estaba enojada la cocinera. <laughs> that cook, she was so angry, she put all her anger into that into that chili because it was like fire. <laughs> That's why Paul in Ephesians today says, get rid of all bitterness, fury, anger, shouting, reviling, must be removed from you along with all malice. That's like that angry cook putting all her anger into her cooking. And you, you feel the effect of it. In place of this, be kind to one another, compassionate, forgiving one another as God has forgiven you in Christ. Those are the ingredients that have to go into the cooking. Those are the ingredients that have to go into the baking. Well, that's what, as a little five-year-old, six-year-old kid, that's what I thought, that's what Grandma put into her bread. That's what this friend puts into her brownies. Imagine if the baker is God. Imagine the love that God puts into the bread that he bakes. The goodness, the kindness, the compassion, the mercy, the justice that God puts into his bread this tasty bread. And imagine, as Paul says here to Ephesians, Christ handed himself over for us as a sacrificial offering to God for a fragrant aroma. Am 
my grandma's bread smelt good. Imagine the aroma of Jesus. The bread that comes down from heaven. That God himself has baked for us. Giving to us. To sustain us on our pilgrimage journey to the kingdom. Just imagine how wonderful that aroma is. And how good the taste. That's why we kept saying the responsorial psalm, taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Well, Jesus is this bread fashioned by God. I am the bread that came down from heaven. I am the bread of life. I am the living bread. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. How do we taste this? I mean, I would have just gotten one of my grandma's bolillos and put slab some butter on it, some capulin jelly. I'm going to make you hungry. <laughs> All these good, and now. Uh, Jesus says, not, well, he says to the devil, actually. As he quotes scripture. Why? Because Jesus, Jesus said, they, will all, they shall all be taught by God. Even the devil's going to be taught by God. The devil's taught by Jesus from the book of Deuteronomy. Not by bread alone does man live, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Take that, devil. Jesus is the bread. Jesus is the word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Just like my grandma's bread taught me. Lots of things. Be grateful. You have food to eat. Be grateful to the one, the hands who made this. Be mindful of those who don't have food to eat. You see how a piece of bread can teach you so many lessons. Share with one another. Be compassionate to each other. Bread can teach you lots of things, but they shall all be taught by God. Jesus is the bread of life. He's the bread that comes down from heaven. He's the living bread. He's the word that comes forth from the mouth of God. He is teaching us. All we need to do is taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Unfortunately, as polls have shown, we as Catholics who believe that the bread that is prepared and consecrated on this altar, that it becomes this living bread, that it is indeed, as Jesus said at the end, whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world, that it is, it is his body and his blood. And yet so many Catholics say, ah, it's only a symbol. It, it's, not it's not really the body. It's not really blood. It, it's just a symbol. It, it's kind of. It's just to remind us, make us think, but it not, it's not really. How do we know this? One, because they respond to the polls. Two, because they don't go to communion. Because if that's what you think it, it's not, and if not what we say it is, then you can dismiss it. You can dismiss it. It's not that important. But if we know it to be truly his flesh for the life of the world, then we will hunger. 
then we will set our nose towards that aroma and go in just like I would say, Grandma, can I, may I have one of those rolls? And I say, please, give me communion. I need this food for the journey of life. And we see that imagery in the first reading today with the prophet Elijah who is being terrorized by Queen Jezebel. And he's praying for death. Enough. Just take my life. And he goes to sleep and the angel comes and wakes him. And there at his head is a hearth cake, bread, and jug of water. So he eats, and then he goes back to sleep. Hey, buddy, wake up. Eat and drink, otherwise the journey will be too long for you. And he ate and drank, and strengthened by that food, he walked 40 days and 40 nights to the mountain of God, Horeb. That was some kind of energy bread. <laughs> Strengthened by that food, he walked 40 days and 40 nights to the mountain of God, Horeb, to the encounter with God. You see that passage there? That's about the last, what we call it, the last rites. People are always like, calling, oh, please come for the last rites. Please. Waiting till grandma is on death's door. And one of the things I'll say, well, can grandma swallow? No, 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 she can't swallow. If she has deep. The last rite is communion. The last rite is communion. So that strengthened by this food, we can make the journey to eternal life, to the encounter with God. That's why, you know, if grandma or grandpa or dad or mom, whoever is, is ill, don't wait till they're on, you know, on the edge of the grave, a foot on a banana peel and ready to just kick the bucket. Don't wait so long, because the last rite is communion. So that they can taste and see the goodness of the Lord journeying with them, giving them that energy, that strength that they need to pass through the valley of the shadow of death to the encounter with God. We have gathered here today, <coughs> called, drawn by God. It, as Jesus has said, no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draw him, draw her. You've been gathered here by God. He's been baking bread. The aroma has spilled forth. You have, you have sensed it. And you have hungered for it. And it brings you here so that you may taste and see that the Lord is good, that you may eat and live forever. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, 
Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and he rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our Heavenly Father provides for all our needs. Confidently, we present our petitions. That the church may be nursed by Jesus at the table of the Word and of the Eucharist. We pray to the Lord. Lord that nations and governments may work to end hunger and the misery caused by natural disasters. We pray to the Lord. Lord that the Lord may strengthen all who are in crisis and who feel that they are at the end of their rope. We pray to the Lord. Lord that the Eucharist may fortify those nearing death with food for the journey to eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, that students, parents, teachers, aides, administrator, and staff may begin the new school year with optimism. We pray to the Lord. Lord, that St. Joseph may help us to keep one another safe during this time of pandemic with its threat to human life. We pray to the Lord. Lord For the Catholic Daughters of America and their ministry to the church, for the repose of the souls of the deceased Gloria Lopez, as well as Elsa Valdez, May they rest in peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord Almighty God, grant us these gifts in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Son of the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Son of the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. 
Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. 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 The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. the communion antiphon together. O Jerusalem, glorify the Lord, who gives you your fill by 
finest week. you.
Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Deacon Augustine Henderson for his presence with us this past summer or this summer and for uh, breaking open the word with us, preaching. Uh, may he have a very successful uh, final year at seminary, at the best seminary in the whole world. Amen. <laughs> My alma mater. <clears throat> uh, and so even though he's not present, I, he's one of those guys that goes online all the time. He'll see this mass. So, see, Augustine, I didn't forget you. Even though you're not here, <laughs> we're still thinking about you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. spirit. Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Have a blessed and beautiful Sunday, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.